<laughs> All right. Well, this week we have Brandon Valentine, the president and founder of the Central Pennsylvania Music Awards. That's right. Yes. Thank you for coming on, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for it's it's just awesome. And you are the so you're the president, and founder, also a musician. That's right. You started this three years ago, correct? Yep. Just about 2019. You know, it was kind of a, a budding idea a little bit before then, but yeah, we're still in our infancy. I'd say in uh, in year three here for yeah. sure. Well, I mean, three years. It's a long time, but it's not. It is. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Because we yeah. started this pretty much around the same time. It feels like yesterday. It also feels like a lifetime ago. True. Yeah. Good point. Wow. So, um, man, I still remember the first year I saw that because I was like, oh, I didn't know we had one of these. Right. And turns out it was the first year for it. So. Right. I think it was a big question mark for a while, and maybe even some people don't you know, haven't heard of it yet, or hey, what's going on here? You know, um, might be some confusion around. You know, Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame hosting an award show. Am I nominated to be in the Hall of Fame? Am I getting an award? How do how does all that work? You know, um, and really that year one. Nobody knew what to expect, you know, even, mm. even me, you know, <laughs> so, organ the ev- organizing the event, you know, like are, are people going to show up for this? Is this going to be, you know, an unmet need in the area? Is this going to work? Uh, you know, do people want this type of uh, recognition to be out there? So, you know, it's, it's still um, a question in some as far as what our organization does. So I appreciate you granting the time, you know, so we can, we can speak about it. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think the important thing is to kind of denote that there's two different arms of it, right? Mm-hmm. So some people say I'm nominated for a Hall of Fame award or I'm on the ballot. So two different arms virtually being Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame is acknowledging the best of the best of all time from our area, right? So, so far we've acknowledged Poison, Hailstorm, you know, some people from the 50s, even before then, Um I think at this point we're up to uh, 18 people inducted into the actual Hall of Fame. Right? Okay. And then on the other arm, we have the Central Pennsylvania Music Awards, which is, as advertised, our local Grammy ceremony. You know, we do a red carpet. Uh, that's virtually acknowledging the best of the best from our area within the past year. So best solo act, best rock act, best jazz band, you know, you name it. Okay. Uh, those two converge together. At the ceremony, then, where we host the awards and we induct the best of the best from all time in that area. And that's neat because you get to get two things done at once. Right. Get some more you know, names and faces out there, which is a phenomenal thing. I'm really glad that somebody's doing it because it's it's cool. People put a lot of time and work into this stuff. For sure. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And so on the ballot, there are 72. Correct? That's right. This past year, uh, the ballot grows every year. Um, same thing with, you know, really this, this whole organization has really grown exponentially year after year. Um, we learn more and more every year. It's impossible for us to know every artist out there, every local band out there. Uh, same thing can be said for every, every artist and band of, you know, yesteryear. We're, we're continually learning of like, Hey, did you ever hear of these guys? You know, they were popular in the fifties and they did X, Y, and Z and they toured the world and they were on, you know, Jimmy Carson or Johnny Carson, I should say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there were, there's, there's stuff that pops up all the time, uh, from somebody. And that's kind of why we try to have, you know, a board of directors and advisory committee. Um, and we're always taking information as well. The, the number of emails and, and Facebook messages that we get are just astronomical of, Hey, have you ever heard of this person? And so on. So we're, uh, we're an open book as far as getting information, uh, mm-hmm. because ultimately we want to do it right in both instances, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's tough. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how much preparation did this take just to get the first one started? Did you, like, from dream to happen, dream to reality, what was that process like? Yeah, it was it was a lot. I mean, honestly, you know, it's a, a lot of time and effort goes into it, but uh, it's something, you know, I mean, probably for about a year, there was a, a close-knit group of people that I would continually kind of pitch the idea to and say, you know, what, what do you think of this? Do, does this work? And a lot of people were like, eh, I can kind of see it, but I don't really get what the angle is here how is this going to work you know like i don't know a lot of a lot of questions right and i think you know i guess more to directly answer your question for for preparation you know it was conceptualizing a business plan around a non-profit organization something i've never done before ever Mm -hmm. you know and just thinking this needs to be a nonprofit because I want it to be a service that helps local musicians and helps, you know, the local community in general. You know, there's tons of DJs out there, you know, sound guys, lighting guys, everything like let's build the scene up. Right. Yeah. So I kind of saw it as like, hey, there's a there's an unmet need here as far as recognition, but there's also a way to kind of bring our community together more so as a family. Uh, you know, together we win kind of kind of uh, atmosphere, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, number one was bringing the right people on board. Um, 
having people who want to volunteer their time for a nonprofit organization to invest in the local community uh, to help put things together uh, was vital. You know, I'm very grateful to everybody that um, plays a part in this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I may have the title of president and founder, but I'm certainly not the only one doing the work for sure. <laughs> yep. Uh, it takes a village, as they say. And um, that's, right there. Yeah, that's it. You got, you got a great village here, man. Yeah. These guys are top notch. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it certainly takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to say, number one, we want to organize something that's done right. Mm -hmm. And we want to organize something that's done um, and going to be successful. So there was a lot of thought pre-planning before we even announced that we were going to have this as a concept. And then it was just kind of fingers crossed, you know, like I remember, you know, our first two ceremonies were at the Whitaker Center. I had a meeting with the Whitaker Center and I was like, look, here's my idea. What do you think? How is, how is this going to work? And, and you're basically just a guy. Yeah. I'm but, just a guy. That's yeah, it. Hey, yeah, I got I'm, a couple people are going to help nobody. me do this. Yep. And yeah, they're looking at me like, I don't really understand what you want to accomplish here, but okay. I and I mean, I, I had to say to them, you know, what happens if nobody buys a ticket? You know, mm -hmm. do we just cancel the ceremony? Like what well, happens you, if it just falls flat on his face? You know? Yeah. And what happens? Or, yeah. Or can you tell us or? Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. They, I mean, they were like, you know, if, if, uh, if it ends up being a total bomb, then you would just cancel and, you know, they, they worked with us because the Whitaker Center is a nonprofit. We we're a nonprofit, right? So I was able to go to them. You know, as as uh, the guy, so to speak, trying to get this together, I, I went to them and said, they, they were like, their sta our standard rate is X, right? Thousands of dollars to rent the Whitaker Center. And I'm like, look, I'm a nonprofit. I, I can't put that money out there. I don't have that kind of money to put out there. I'm not going to take on that kind of risk. I think this will work, but the ticket sales have to pay for itself. So if we put it at, you know, X amount per ticket, whatever it is, and we sell X amount of seats, we'll deem it a success and it'll pay for itself. And they were like, okay, well, we're willing to take the ride with you and see if it works. And, you know, we we posted it <laughs> and it worked. Did, I you guys, mean, did you guys sell out your first year? We did. We, we sold out the Whitaker Center in our first year. We sold out the Whitaker Center in our second year. And you guys are moving to the Hershey Theater now, correct? That's correct. Is that to upsize or... 100% for sure, oh yeah. God. Yeah, I mean, the, the Whitaker Center, it's it's kind of debatable, somewhere between 700 and 800 seats, depending on how much they can cram in there. Uh, it's again, a lot of people. It's a lot of people, man. It's fun, you know? It's yeah. awesome. It's it's uh, it's really cool being on stage and looking out and seeing, you know, all the best of the best musicians, uh, you know, there together as a family. It's really cool, man. To, and, and to know that it not only was, you know, deemed a success that people showed up, but also that it sold out is a really a testament to our local music scene as a whole. And now that we needed to move to a bigger venue, um, it's almost triple the capacity at the Hershey Theater that it is the Whitaker Center. So tickets are on sale now. If we sell this thing out, man, that is going to blow everybody's minds because it's buying tickets for sure. So. It's nuts, man. It's almost nineteen hundred people that fit in that place, and uh, we'll see. But tickets are going quickly already, so it's 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 going well. That's phenomenal. Yeah, oh man. Nineteen hundred. Uh, do you have any rough idea on how many you're at right now? I think uh, I think last look, and I think we were around nine hundred. So um, you can definitely. I mean, you with the events uh, the twenty fourth. So yeah, I mean, tickets went on sale uh, January seventh. I think was the Friday. Um, That's like last week, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I don't know when this airs, but yeah, it was last week. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, the, the crazy thing that happened actually was by the end of the weekend of opening ticket sales, we sold more. Uh, we filled more seats than the Whitaker Center has at capacity. So last year, the Whitaker Center sold out in about six weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. And if we would have stayed at the Whitaker Center, it would have sold out in the opening weekend of ticket sales. So it really justified to us. We made the right move moving, moving to a bigger venue because now more people can attend. Yeah. And that's awesome that you did that. So how many bands are performing at this one? Or yeah. Is there bands? Yeah, yep. there's bands performing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. So year one, you know, we were kind of in our, in our in infancy. We had a, uh, a house band there that were kind of performing, uh, featuring some of the local artists that would perform um, let's say an homage kind of song to the Hall of Fame inductees. Okay. Right? Uh, we had video acceptance speech from Brett Michaels of Poison. Um, you know, year two, we moved in and said, hey, let's have the artists perform here, right? So we had the Badleys perform on stage. We had Jeffrey Gaines perform on stage. We had Pentagon perform on stage. Uh, Hailstorm, I was actually able to induct at the York Fairgrounds this past summer in person on stage with Hailstorm. It was That's awesome. So cool. So, you know, getting buy-in from, like, some of these big, legit acts like Poison and Hailstorm, uh, the Badleys, Jeffrey Gaines, you know, you name it, the Magnificent Men were there as well. We, uh, you know, moved back in, in a couple decades. Um, that's been vital to the growth of the overall organization as well. Okay. Now, for somebody who 
say you know the local band or somebody who's listening to this who would like to get themselves inducted or not inducted but you know awarded uh you know what would their step process be or what yeah what, what would their process be I can't yeah be stuttering <laughs> it's all good man <laughs> we're, we're constantly fine-tuning uh what we call you know our nomination process or or how we consider bands right um and get back to your question we will have live performances there and it will be the hall of fame inductees this year as well so oh okay oh wait, uh, sorry yeah. yeah yeah no all good no <laughs> I, I just thought of that i was like you know what i didn't answer his question so um but uh yeah the nomination process for consideration you know it's it's pretty uh, robust, I would say. Uh, we're we're kind of even fine tuning that now to make an official nomination form for acts to be considered on the Hall of Fame ballot moving forward. Okay. Um, so there will be a form on our website, uh, which is the acronym CPMHOF.com. So the acronym for Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame. It's a mouthful, I know. Uh, but nonetheless, there'll be things, you know, list your achievements, uh, you know, your websites, everything that we can kind of look as far as co- content goes. And then we're going to do the same uh, moving forward for nominations for the awards as well, which will be, you know, submit your information towards the end of the year when we have an open nomination period. That says, you know, things like what kind of content did you put out this year? Did you have any singles? Did you have an EP? Did you have an album? Uh, you know, did you have any national opers? Did you play some big gigs? Did you do some touring? Because, again, the award ceremony as designed as the local Grammys is really what did you do this past year, right? Like not which one's the best rock band in our area of all time. Mm -hmm. It's who really took that next step this past year to put themselves in a new category and, you know, take that, that step up the ladder to say we're we're moving and shaking in this area and we're we're down to do big things you know so basically like if you yeah five years ago yeah you guys were selling out shows and you know busting record sales but you haven't done anything this year you're probably not getting in there right yeah i mean 2020 was hard i mean like nobody had any shows you know i guess that's a good point even this year you know still has kind of a question mark on it because the award ceremony coming up here in march is actually looking at what was accomplished in 2021 for each of the bands right Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean if if there's a band out there that you know hasn't done anything hasn't played a show all year they're probably not going to get up for a nomination i gotcha. mean it's it's based on the, the content out that out there so yeah but at the same time could their record sales offset that or something like that sure i mean there's a wide variety of factors for sure um and again like i said earlier i mean we don't know all the bands we don't know all the artists you know it, it happens every year where we come out we release the nominations and i probably got 20 emails uh messages that said have you ever heard of this person and most cases the answer is no we haven't yeah you know good thank you for reaching out we'll add it to our consideration list we'll look into them next year and we invite them always to when the nominations come out let us know what's going on you know so we continue to grow and ultimately i think that means you know the the nominations continue to grow too that's really cool this whole experience just seems really cool and i'm excited to go this year because i know you guys have a red carpet experience and stuff like that what's What's that all about? How's that work? Yeah, it's been growing uh, every year. So first year, our red carpet experience was we had a we had a little red carpet and we had a photo backdrop. Right, nice. that was it. We had one. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and it was right by the bar, and we realized that the traffic was just too much in that area. Right, <laughs> <laughs> everybody was in line for the bar at the Whitaker Center. Everyone was in line to get their picture taken, and that was the number one kind of feedback that we got which is we need more photo backdrops we need to change this a little bit right so year two we added a second photo backdrop we made an area in the uh, bar or the uh, lobby downstairs we made an area in the lobby upstairs we added uh, some local radio stations came they set up tents they did live broadcasts interviews of artists as well Uh, and we're really taking all that to the next level here with the hershey theater when you walk in the hershey theater my main concern looking at this as a as a venue for us to move to was the size of the lobby, right? It's pretty narrow. It's probably about the, the width of this room. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking you put, you know, 1,000 people in here and there's, you know, a bar there. Like this place is going to get jam-packed. Where's everybody going to go, right? So they offered uh, what they call the blue room to us, which is almost like a – uh, like a hotel ballroom, basically, that is an extension of the lobby that people usually don't get access to. Nice. But we're able to basically turn that into this red carpet experience, right? So everybody can walk through the lobby, uh, through the main doors, and there's this huge extension ballroom out there. So we're going to have red carpet in there with the photo backdrops. Uh, we're going to have actually a, a host um, uh I guess at this point we'll announce it. So Earl David Reed, who's a stand-up comedian, uh, is actually going to be hosting the red carpet, and he's going to be interviewing people on the red carpet as they come in. So band comes in, and they're like, hey, man, you know, who are you from with? And, you know, I'm sure he's going to have a lot of, 
you know, clips or whatever with, yeah. his, with his comedy for them. But it's actually going to be videotaped as well. Um, and they'll have that either potentially as a live stream for the red carpet experience and or to be able to watch back as well. So a lot of that going on is people getting drinks, you know, like interview, having a fun time with uh, with a stand-up comedian there. And then to fill out the ballroom, there's going to be a lot of almost like vendor experiences, right? So I think at this point we have like similarly – four radio stations that will be there interviewing people as well. Wow. Um, you know, some online stuff, um, just kind of vendors go. It's kind of an open invitation to say, Hey, you know, if you're in this area, you can set up a table, have your logo in there. All the musicians are going to be walking through there. So, you know, let's make it kind of a, a friendly, welcoming environment and uh, ultimately make the musicians feel, you know, like royalty for a night because it's the biggest night. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we definitely talk could talk about it off air sometime, but if there's any way we, we can get involved in that in the future years or something like that. Absolutely. Open know. invitation to you. If you want in there, you got you got a spot, man. Yeah, dude, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> yep. you very much. Now, that sounds so cool. That's awesome that you give them that experience, the red carpet experience that way. Like you said, they, they deserve it for it. You know, they put a lot of work into it. Right, exactly. That's so cool. And there's uh, – who's – so – Who's hosting the entire thing? Yes. So uh, past two years, we had Chachi and Jenna, who are former uh, radio uh, co-hosts, I guess, with uh, Nash FM. Okay. Um, Chachi expressed to us that he's he's moved on from his broadcasting career, right? Uh, he's, got a, he's got a real job now, as they say. Okay. Uh, <laughs> which has been kind of overwhelming to him. So actually, before the last ceremony, he said, hey, man, I'm going to have to take a, at least a year off here. This is It's been a lot for him. So um, we're going to have Jenna Clay still staying on uh, and coupled with Chris Garrett, who has great TV, uh, radio, broadcasting um, experience as well. Um, so we'll, we'll be announcing that uh, next week as well. So it might be right around the time of this. But yeah, Earl David Reed, as far as uh, hosting the red carpet, and then Jenna Clay and Chris Garrett uh, hosting in the event itself which which is cool too it's almost has the vibe of a real award ceremony mm-hmm. you know they come out they do the you know not necessarily song and dance but you know they they have a bit that they do yeah. uh they make it friendly in between uh they're, awards and stuff so it's fun they're known people you know i right. couldn't tell you what they looked like i definitely sure. heard all those names before though <laughs> right, exactly so that's really cool for Are sure you out there at all or yeah i'm out there a bit um i uh i manage just the hall of fame inductions itself so i kind of come out and say okay we're going to induct you know poison here or hailstorm or whatever it is um you know this year we are uh inducting live uh, from the York area, so Rock Band Live. Uh, Del McCory Band is actually a very well-known uh, bluegrass band. They've been inducted in the International Bluegrass Hall of Fame. Wow. Uh, he was born, and his sons were born in the York area as well. Uh, we have um, Third Stream, which is a uh, jazz band from the area in Hershey. They've been around for almost 50 years. Oh, my God, that's the, a long time. Right? <laughs> We have the Pixies three. They're coming. They're flying in from all over the nation. It's three, uh, three ladies who had had their success in the 1960s when they were teenagers, right? And not only are they flying in from all corners of the United States, but they're going to perform at the award ceremony. It's going to be awesome. That's so cool. It's going to be cool. I mean, they haven't performed in in years, and and they're reuniting for the event, so it's going to be super cool. That is phenomenal. Yeah, are you getting like ticket sales based on the performances as well because of stuff like that? I think so. I mean, they're they're based out of the Hanover area, so you know, I think uh, some people who who may have been fans of them in the '60s, you know, maybe up to today, um, are like, I want to go see them reunited. You know, I want to not only do I want to see them perform, but I want to see them at their finest hour getting inducted in our local Hall of Fame. So just kind of be there as a support system too. So yeah, I mean, you know, fans of of live in general bluegrass fans of del mccory it's it's kind of like i should have a seat because i should be there for this momentous occasion to commemorate their history here in our area you know that's really cool yeah man i like that kind of stuff that's phenomenal which i mean at which point were you just like wow we did this the first year we're doing it the second year and we're just going to keep going i mean what point really were you like wow we did this we pulled it off was there a moment for something like that or yeah there was definitely a moment for me where I mean, it's it's been nose to the grindstone since I you know announced that we're going to try something. Where it's just go 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 go. You know how do we how do we get bigger? How do we make it work? You know, a lot of reaching out to the agents to get people involved. But um, ultimately, in that first year, it was just let's try to make it a success. Let's sell it out, and then like let's let's impress people and let's have the ceremony be something of value. But there was a moment where you know I was backstage before the doors opened, and I was still writing cue cards at that point. Um, to and the and the winner is you know stuff like that and the nominees are I was still handwriting that stuff on a piece of paper for people to read for the ceremony that's how kind of you know last minute some of the things were 
And, you know, I finished up some of that. They opened up the doors. People started coming in. I headed back to the green room, you know, I was back there with some family and friends and talking to the staff at the Whitaker Center. And there was a point where my wife and I walked out into the lobby and it was the first that I'd been out there since the artist had arrived. We opened up the door and it was just a sea of people all dressed to the nines in suits and, you know, evening gowns. And I, just seeing that image to me was like, man, it worked. Like people got it, you know, like people want to come out. They want to get dressed up for the night. They want to feel like local musical royalty as they should. You yeah. Know? So it was awesome. That is so, so cool. Wow. It's just a lot to take in. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just like, my head's spinning. There's just so many things, I, so many things I want to ask you about, yep. but so many things I'm just trying to take in. What's the future for it right now? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, like you said, you know, how did, how did you get to the point where you're like, okay, we're not only going to do this for two years, but three years. I mean, we almost set it up, uh, you know, where we called it the uh, uh, the first annual, the inaugural, I should say, you know, like this is going to be an every year event, you know, like most award shows are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm committed long-term to this in this area. Uh, who knows how long it's, it's going to go, but heck with 72 people on the ballot and with a continuing local music scene that just does nothing but grow, the yeah. talent keeps raising the bar. I mean, I can only see it getting bigger and better each and every year. That's awesome. And that's something we actually talk a lot, talk about a lot on here because we have a lot of musicians on. Sure, man. And it's just like, Harrisburg, this area has something special. Not just Harrisburg alone, but yep. central Pennsylvania right. has something extremely special going on where there's just, I mean, like everybody I know out here is a musician almost. Right, it's, right. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you're a musician as well. Right. You, what's the name of your band again? I'm sorry. So I'm in uh, Cold Spring Union. Cold Spring Union. I've also... Uh, in Mountain Road as a drummer as well. So I drum, I'm a drummer. Uh, but yeah, man, I've been in over, I don't know, 10 bands, I would guess, since high school wow. in the area. Um, played with a couple, you know, current artists as well as a fill-in drummer here and there. Uh, write songs as well, play a little guitar myself. So, you know, I think that's kind of where this idea stemmed from is I was in the scene, you know, I still am in the scene um, and kind of see you know, what really was there out there for someone driving force motivation wise to get recognition? You know, it was virtually like, I don't know, there's a local magazine that has like top three bands of the year and you can get, or even like the simply the best thing for like Patriot news. Yeah. But there's so many people doing such big things and really could be successful on a national stage. I could. Yeah. I mean, there's probably at least 20 bands in this area that you could put on mainstream radio or, just throw out there to the wolves and say they're great you yeah know? and at least that's something i've all thought about often too because having once again having as many mus musicians on here as we do and knowing as many as i do i'm like listening to my friend's music and i'm like oh my god right. like <laughs> if the right people heard this you would right. be everywhere right. and it's nice that you do this so that way it gets them that more recognition right and it's another thing they can put on there oh yeah we were awarded this at the right. central pennsylvania musical hall of fame or yeah so that, right? That's exactly exactly it, Denny. I mean, it's like it's like add it to your resume. Like the goal is, you know, you're a nominee. You know, we we make a little badge. They can use it on their um, promotions for like a show coming up. Even if it just gets them one show for being a nominee, right? Somebody reaches out and says, "Oh, I never heard of this band, but they got nominated for best rock band. Let's give them a shot. Let's give them a gig." Mission accomplished, man. Yeah, but it's doing bigger and better things than that. Like you know, I'm even even uh, people that I'm really close with, fans wise, are fans of music, but they're not really involved in the local scene. It's like the one of the best things I had feedback wise was after the first year, uh, Medusa's Disco won Album of the Year. Right, one of my friends never heard of him before, never said anything, and he goes, "Yo." I took time to listen to that album and it's awesome. I bought it on iTunes. It's cool. And just because there was a, an award ceremony that was local and said, Hey, they won some same exact thing. Like song of the year. People are just going down, downloaded each one of the songs and just listen to them all. That's ultimately what the goal is, is just growing it for, for each and every of the nominees and uh, ultimately the winners too, man. If it, if it results in money in their pocket or being able to advertise as a resume builder to get a, a better gig or whatever it takes to get the next level, that's what it's there for. You get a listen, that's a benefit. I mean, it's... For sure. That's... That's really cool. I like that. I, yeah, I'm excited to extend, <laughs> to attend it this year too, because the last, I, honestly, you couldn't get a ticket, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the first that was the thing. I was like, can I even get a ticket though? Is it for musicians only? That's right. the one thing I was wondering about. Yep. But I'm glad that it was made very clear this year that they're sure. available for everybody. And that's that's, right. that's awesome. I'm excited to attend it. Can I still get a picture on the red carpet? 
I guess so, man. As long as as long as you're dressed well enough to get a picture. Oh, trust yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Show up in something flashy. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> well, heck, man. Like I said, open invitation. So you want to bring you know the the podcast mobile there, do some interviews with uh, some artists. You know, it's a it's a the red carpet experience will be five to seven p.m. So it's virtually as people are walking around, you could you could bring all your gear in there and do a live thing if you want. So, so if you like, if we just decided, all right, we're gonna grab these cameras and a mic and head over there, you wouldn't have a problem with that. We wouldn't have a problem. The only thing I would I would discuss with you is just making sure you had adequate uh access to electrical and you know the cables you need and stuff like that yeah. but yeah man that's what it's there for dude that's awesome that's thank it. you i'm gonna Absolutely. Well, yeah, guys we uh <laughs> we talked about in a meeting on monday now so. <laughs> wow that's so cool is there uh any vip ticket access or anything like that or there isn't we thought that yeah we thought about doing that um i don't know the 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 question has always been you know how do we make it better um we're not doing this to make money yeah right so like, I can tell you the ceremony is probably going to co- end up costing about twenty five thousand dollars to put on just the ceremony, right? Before paying for anything else. That's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the rental of the place, you know, the audio visual, the stuff. So you know, I, I say that with all transparency because if there's anybody out there that thinks, you know, we're charging too much for the tickets, we try to make it super affordable, but also make it justifiable to to pay for the event itself. How much are tickets? Tickets are twenty five bucks. That's fair. That's yeah, totally fair. I mean, I think anything over that's like a little ridiculous. Um, but you know, it's not five bucks either. So yeah. But you're going to a prestigious Hershey's Theater. I mean, like this place looks like the Titanic when you walk in there. Like yeah. it's like mosaic tile ceilings. It was built in 1933. Like it's legit, right? Yeah. And and you know, we're trying to add some value with the red carpet experience as well. And again, plus there's a bar and that's cool. right. Right. Yeah. There's an after party, man. It's oh, a whole yeah, thing, I mean, dude. Ask you about that. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, hopefully the, the the ticket justifies itself. But yeah, man, we're gonna do we're gonna do an after party. We've done one each year. Um, What's that like? The past two years, it's been at Arugas uh, on Second Street, which you know hasn't been anything flashy or anything. But they were a sponsor, so we worked with them kind of collaboration wise to say, all right, we'll we'll bring the crowd in there. What they did for us is they had a DJ at the after party and we collected local musicians uh, original songs and they would play that at the after party. So oh, that's you're, really cool. you're there as a nominee and you're like, here's my song, man. Everybody's dancing and having a good time to your song. It's awesome. That's really cool. We get the people point across the room like, oh, yeah, it's you. It's you. It's you. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this? Oh, there he is over there. What is the, <laughs> wait, this is on the 23rd, right? Yeah. 24th. I'm sorry, 24th. Yep. What day is that? Is that a uh, Thursday night? Yep. It's a Thursday. Oh. Yep. So we strategically do it on a Thursday because everybody says, well, why don't you make it a Friday or Saturday? Well, that's when musicians make their money. That's their livelihood, right? So uh. we don't want to take gigs away from musicians. So we do it at the start of the weekend, Thursday night. Every year it will always be on a Thursday. Okay. Well, that works for us because we're all usually free Thursday nights. <laughs> so I just got to take off that Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kissing a little me. too hard at the after party. <laughs> Believe me, I am as well, man. But yeah, after party wise, this year it's moving to the Anglewood, right? Which mm-hmm. is a music live music venue. It's a brewery and restaurant in Hershey. If you I, haven't been there, you got to check is it. Is it new? It's pretty new. They opened up like right around COVID time. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I don't is know. Is it like in a barn or something half. like that? That's right. Yeah. The yeah. Anglewood barn uh, is. Sick. I think it's like the 1800s was when it was around. Oh my God. Um, I forget. Rick would kill me. I think it's like 1866, I want to say. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, um, they have been the platinum sponsor for our award ceremony for the past three years consecutively. Uh, so we're we're really gracious that the we're able to move to Hershey for a bigger venue, but that also makes it really close proximity to the Englewood because it's, it's in the Hershey area. It's technically in Hummelstown, uh, but it's like a mile or two from the theater itself. And... Um, they can fit, you know, hundreds of people in that place, and it's going to be one heck of a party for sure. I was going to say, if you're selling 900 tickets, you, right? The Arugas downtown might be a little too small. <laughs> yeah, and that's at this point. I mean, who knows? It might be, you know, 1500 or something. But again, same thing. Arugas was close proximity to the the Whitaker Center. Everybody yeah. could walk there. A lot of people come in and out too, so it's you know changing crowd and everything. Well, you but, get plenty of bars right there. Good bars too. Exactly. Yeah. The yeah. key is you got access to alcohol, access to music. And ultimately, you get to celebrate being a nominee or being a winner. So it's yeah. it's fun stuff, man. And celebrate with the people. If even if you're not, you get to celebrate with the people who are. Be happy That's right for them. Support each other. That's right. That's really amazing. That's really. And amazing. there's a lot of like you know. I'm I'm always there, you know. Not that I matter or anything, but uh, you know, like there, there's a lot of, of course like, you do. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> nobody wants to talk to me. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of board members and advisory committees that uh, members that come out to the um, 
uh, to the after party as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to be there and just like pick their brains a little bit too. You know, some, some of them are, are local legends in the area, you know, or, or in TV and advertising and stuff. So business owners, how'd you go about picking your board members and advisories and stuff like that? If you, or whatever you can tell me about that. Yeah, man. I mean, that was uh, a lot of thought put into that. Um, we didn't, we just started with a board, right? And I wanted to have people that I was very close to, that I had some trust in, um, people I knew were number one involved in the, in the music scene and would also be, also be pas- passionate about the growth of the organization, right? Uh, so we just started with the board and then we got tons and tons of requests where people were just reaching out to us going, how do I get involved? How do I get involved? I want to help with this. You know, I want to make this better. I, I have some advice. I want to do this. And it automatically just led like, look, we got like 20, 30 people here that want to have, you know, their opinion heard or help better the organization. So we created the advisory committee. A lot of that was people coming to us saying they wanted to be involved. And then as we continue to add people to the advisory committee, it was like, well, how about so-and-so? They're pretty, you know, impactful in the area. You know, they have a longstanding his- history. Um, ultimately, it was really trying to find people who have a pulse on the local scene, coupled with people who have the knowledge of, you know, decades past. I was like, going to say, because you have people from the 60s getting... Right, yeah. exactly. I mean, like, when I started this, I was like, okay, there's at least, I don't know, 10, 20 people that I can think of from the area that should be eligible in the Hall of Fame and doing a ton of research and getting, you know... Um, advice from the advisory committee like hey this band in the 50s did x y and z i never heard of these people you know i mean yeah. i invite you like seriously check out the ballot on the website 72 names in there and i'm willing to bet 50 of them are not even in your brain as who are these people you really? know i mean like because they weren't mine you know? <laughs> now the central Pennsylvania <clears throat> music award or yeah or hall of fame do you have to be from central P- pennsylvania specifically or just pennsylvania right so yeah we kind of made arbitrary borders like what do we deem central pennsylvania right so we have a map and we kind of have like an outline of the area it's virtually like um, maryland border new york border uh, kind of goes out towards like past Altoona and then kind of like Reading area goes okay. the whole way up to like Scranton Wilkes-Barre as well. Basically so my old work territory. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you're in sales, it's, it's central Pennsylvania is, is one and the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The easy way to say it is it, it doesn't include Philly and Pittsburgh. Gotcha. Right. Or Erie or something. So we get a lot of messages from, you know, some artists in the Philly area that say, how come I wasn't considered for this category or whatever? And we're like, where are you based out of? And they're like, you know, downtown philly like that's not not central pennsylvania right (laughs) yeah we have hopes you know you asked the question earlier like where does this go um the ultimate goal is to get some state grant federal funding uh actually make an actual museum local facility that could actually be the hall of fame itself and not only just the central pennsylvania music hall of fame but turn it into the pennsylvania music hall of fame so bigger you know Constant growth, man. <laughs> that would be insane if you could get one of those, like an right. actual Hall of Fame. Right. That would be sweet. My laptop just died, but yeah. <laughs> that would be sweet. Like, you could get an actual building. And like, dude, you'd have to take some pride in that. You, you're putting in a lot of work on this right now. Yeah, man. for sure, man. Yeah, it's it's a lot of time, but it's it's something I'm passionate about. You know, I mean, and that, dude, the growth that you've had. Though. Yeah. I mean, 2019, the beginning of 2019, this is probably pretty much just a dream. And right. By the end of 2019, you accomplished it. Yeah. And then two years later, you're like, wow, the place I had to like pitch on a dream that they would let me use it. I now right. can't even go to because it's too small for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's like, wild, man. And again, you know, it takes a village. Like like I said, I'm not the I'm not the only one involved in, in making stuff happen here. Um, it's it's certainly a, a team success. But yeah, man, it's it's been crazy successful and I'm, I'm glad uh it's been you know well received and that it's it's the reason for forming this organization is because there are some entities out there that constantly ask artists for money right they're like yeah. you know pay us x amount a hundred dollars and we'll put you out on the radio or we'll you know record something for you and push it out to radio stations or you know pay us a management fee or stuff like that or whatever we'll help you with stuff and the point of making as an as a nonprofit is just to offer assistance to artists to help build them up without asking them for anything in return. That's it. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you have a great team on your side. And that's what it takes because I, sure, I couldn't do this alone. Like <laughs> right. I got what, I mean, three guys with me and it's that's right. I, I mean, Chris does the most work. We gotta give him appreciation for that. Thanks, but yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't do anything. <laughs> but no, it's 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 good to have a good team, and it sounds like you have a good one there with you. Yeah, man, I'm glad that's 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 great. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So after party, God, man, 
That's just, well, am I miss? I feel like we've talked about a lot of different things, but I feel like I'm missing out on anything. What else do you want to talk about about this thing, man? Man, I mean, there's so much to talk about, to be honest. I mean, uh, what's your favorite part? Favorite part so far uh, was probably getting the experience to induct Hailstorm on stage at the York Fair, man. I mean, it was just it was just cool. They're all great musicians, you know, Lizzie Hill, um, RJ Hill, the drummer, brother and sister team. Uh, they were nothing but welcoming and heartwarming. You know, they... They pulled me out on stage and they they had me read them their plaque and hand it to them and then I got to take a shot with the whole band on stage, man, in front of like you know tens of thousands of people. It was, what was just a cool. shot. What was the shot? It was uh, they just said do you like whiskey and I was like yeah, man, let's do it. And I don't even know what brand it was, whatever. But but they literally had like a whole sidebar like behind stage of just filling drinks, making well, drinks, man. Like, hailstorm, dude. I want to be hailstorm, <laughs> man. <I> mean, <laughs> you you see the pinnacle of where these artists are at, and you know that's where everybody wants to be. And that's where I want a lot of the local musicians to get to the level too. I, I can't wait until this is, you know, five, 10, 15 years down the line. And we're thinking of somebody who won, you know, best solo artist in, in 2022. And there they are, you know, top of the world, man. Like how cool is that going to be? That you know? would, and Yeah. I mean, the feeling to know that you had a hand in that helped out. You couldn't replace that with anything in the world. Right. And that's, that's, that's ultimately the goal of the organization. Like I said, you know, I feel like in so many different ways is, is to help and assist uh, all the local musicians. And, you know, it's also like, you know, I'm a baseball coach. I help uh, coach my, my, uh, my son's team. Do you sleep? I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I'm involved in way too much. So, uh, thank you to my wife for being patient with me for sure, man. I'm in bands. I got a full time job. I got two kids. I coach baseball. I was going to say, you're in sales on top of that. Yep. Like, yep. God. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I wonder you don't have hair. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Trust me, bro. You've, hit it, you've hit it on the on nail on the head, I'm man. I'm right behind you. This is all product. Right. Like, literally. So, keep- so after, after you do one, so like last year when you were done, yep. Basically, n- next day is like your day off, and then you start again, or or what? Man, it's that's a great question because when we did the first year, I was like, you know, it was this massive exhale, like, all right, we made it work, you know, I got a year off kind of thing, right? That was almost the way that I felt as soon as the ceremony was off. Was like, all right, we're good for a while, you know. And it was like right after that, because that was January, uh, the end of January in 2020. So right. heck, what, six weeks later, the pandemic started, right? Yeah. And then we're like, what are we going to do? What can we do as a local uh, organization to help artists here? Gigs are getting canceled. They're losing paychecks. Um, so it was like, what can we do? And it turned into this, let's host live streams, right? We had almost 200 live streams of different artists on our Facebook page. What? Given them the ability to showcase not only their talent, but we opened up a virtual tip jar for the artists, and it resulted in over thirty thousand dollars in tips during the pandemic. Wow! In the virtual tip jar. So, back to your question, right? Was all right. I got a year off, and then it was like we got to do something, man. We're a nonprofit organization. We're here to service the musicians. What can we do? And that turned into like a year long project, right? So since then, it's just been nothing but ideas. How can we do extra things? You know, I guess the the best lead into is is how the Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame is an actual nonprofit is we're grounded in education. So we have to have, um, in order to meet requirements to maintain 501c3 status, we have right. to be education for the youth, right? Okay. So recently we did something co- we called the... Um, youth music showcase right and we pulled in the top 10 submissions that we got um where we i don't know ages 12 to 18 we had the artists come in they practiced with a full band of uh, studio musicians and they performed live on stage at the englewood which is an awesome venue i mean to get that experience as as you know a 30 year old uh let alone a 12 year old is awesome yeah you know? Um, so we're constantly thinking, getting ideas. How can we do different things? In that case, East Music Showcase was one. Uh, we have a concept to put out like a, um, a songwriter's clinic, um, you know, constantly being fed ideas. So it's really evolved from like, yes, that initial exhale from the uh, award show to well, there's no stop at this point. Right. What are we going to do next? What's going to be the next thing we can give back? Um, now, you've, now you've even got like sort of sub projects going off. Exactly. That's awesome. Yep. It's so cool, man. It doesn't just stop at an, an award. There's so much more behind the scenes. For guys. sure, man. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. I didn't even know that part. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the youth music education is the piece that makes it a nonprofit, period. Oh, really? Okay. We've done like, um, 
uh, music camps before COVID where we had an uh, instructor come out. We opened up kids. We taught them how to play bucket drums, ukulele, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, being grounded in youth music education um, is ultimately giving back, but so is recognizing the artist. So, you know, all all in all, it's just good feels coming out of out of the nonprofit, you know? <laughs> That's amazing, man. It's so great that somebody's out here actually doing this. I can't believe you're local, too. It just I feel like you should be living somewhere far away. Just to have somebody in the area is what I'm trying to say that is doing something this phenomenal is just mind-blowing to me. It just yep. doesn't seem real. Born and raised in, in uh, Harrisburg. Spent some time in the Hershey area as well, so... Been here all my life, man. That's crazy. So I, I'm invested and passionate about the local scene for sure. <laughs> Whatever reason, I thought you were from Lancaster. I was like talking to Chris. I was like, I'm pretty sure he's coming from Lancaster. I don't know why. I You're like, that. I think he's Amish or something. <laughs> <laughs> coming with his big old beard. Right. Oh, wait, we're going to be putting this on the internet? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Not <to> use that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. So, what, three years now? What, um,. From, I guess, what, last year you guys was last year at the Whitaker Center changing to the Hershey Theater. What are the other changes that you guys are going to be making as well? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, one thing we do on an annual basis is we, last year we put out a feedback uh, form to everybody who attended, and it was how can we get better? So, I mean, that's, ultimately that's that's what it's about, you know. Um, so we made a change in the uh, red carpet experience. We made a change uh, in the number of you know photo backdrops and traffic and all that. Made a change in the venue. Um, man, I don't know. I mean, we're thinking about doing some creative things with the program uh, as well. There's a project out there that uh, Studio 28 Photography is helping us with. They're taking uh, pictures, images of local artists through zoom or teams or what have you through a webcam and then we're going to compile all of those pictures together to be a representation of our local music scene as the program for the event uh so i think they've had over a hundred different musicians participate in that so far so hopefully you know it'll be like one of those mosaic tile looking things yep. with like 400 faces on it like this is central pennsylvania you know so um Constant ideas, man. I mean, um, yeah, you, you guys work with a lot of different people on this. And yeah, like man. Sponsorships. Yep. Um, I mean, probably at the end we'll have you call them all out. But you want to like, <laughs> who, who all are you working with right now? If you, I mean, I don't care if you say now or later, but sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's you know, we mentioned how do we make this run right? Uh, I have not taken a dime out of this organization that hasn't made any money. Right? It's a nonprofit. Right? Yeah. It's a true uh, nonprofit. Nobody on the board is making any money. Nobody in the advisory committee is making any money. It's here to service the community. That's it. And it's literally just going into making this happen. That's right. I mean, the uh, you know the the ceremony at the Whitaker Center cost over ten grand, and that's exactly what we made in ticket sales for selling it out. So it virtually paid itself. You know, yeah. heck, the awards that we buy are almost four thousand dollars for all the awards themselves. I right? can only imagine <laughs> having them all I mean, custom made. Yeah. yeah, we don't want you know some little chintzy thing that you get for you know participating patient award in a little league team right yeah. we want it to look legit something that you can you can put on your mantle and be proud of you know or put wherever you want on something your desk you or should be you know? proud of too yeah and that's what i talked to a lot of local musicians about as well as like you know what's the goal here right like you know i've been in bands my goal isn't to make it you know i think everybody's goal is to make it we got to be real i mean the chance of that is like minute right mm -hmm. so ultimately i think is like how can you leave your your stamp your legacy you know like for me it's like i think you know two three generations from now if they're able to be like oh look grandpa recorded this album you know like here's this old antiquated thing called a cd you know like let's listen to him drum on this thing is like that's gonna be cool you know like yeah. something that's there that you did you expressed yourself artistically um after you're gone that can still be looked at or read or listened to or whatever um that's ultimately the goal i think yeah you know yeah not everybody can make it. There's been successful acts out of this area, but uh, you know, a lot of a lot of it in between is either, you know, a side hustle for pay. Uh, if you're a full time musician, you know, you're probably doing it out there solo duos, uh, as much as you can get. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like Derek Henry is a full time sure. musician now. Like, is he? Okay. He, I didn't yes. know that. Yeah. Well, is he still? I know he was. He did it. He started that right in like the beginning of 2020. I'm pretty sure he's still a full time. Musician. That's something I wanna I wanna know is who is who is full time. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that should be an award. Full time musician. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it it's a lot, man. <laughs> it's a lot because they're booking all their own gigs. They're trying to you know make as much as they can. And uh, one of my goals ultimately is then is to get the pay up. 
right? Like yeah. almost like talk with the venues and like almost standardize like, look, man, these people are legit. You shouldn't be paying them $50 for three hours. Like yeah. that's ridiculous. These aren't you know? some kids just practicing in their parents' garage anymore. Right. So hopefully with the recognition and, you know, possibly having some uh, some pool, maybe even with booking um, or, or dealing with some of the venues is to – get the artists pay up as well to help them out, especially yeah. the full-time artists. Well, the music industry is going through a really weird time right now because on one hand you have the ability to get your voice out there um, with higher impact rate than ever before with yep. the internet and all the different platforms out there with, you know, Apple music, SoundCloud, yep. Spotify, all that stuff. For sure. So you have that. And then the other aspect, we're still on year two of fighting through a pandemic. So right. you're meeting in the middle and you, you have this advantage and you have this disadvantage here. Right. And I think it's nice because you, if I understood you correctly, like you're kind of almost like resetting the standard for these people here. So it's like, like I mentioned, it's not a bunch of kids practicing their parents' garage anymore. Think about, I mean, how many bands record in this studio? I'm sorry, not record, um, practice Practice, in this studio here. Mm -hmm. I think at least five. Sure. They're all paying rent to practice in a actual studio. Well, no, you know, it is an actual studio, (laughs) but an actual sound stage where they're practicing and everything have preset equipment. Yep. And then on top of that, everybody knows being in a band has expenses. That's sure. why everybody does merch sales, right. and ticket sales, because you got to have the gas to get from point A to point B. 100%. I mean, if it was free to be in a band, everybody would be in. Right. One, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. it's good that you're trying to reset it. And that's what a lot of the world's going through right now, but yeah. it's music industry specifically, I think it, in my opinion. Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, getting back to what you're saying earlier with sponsorships, it's like the companies that we've involved in are also invested in the scene too, to kind of reset that standard too. So, you know, nobody's, like I said, nobody's, nobody's taking money out of this. There isn't any money to be made. So it's all operating on the ticket sales is paying for the event itself. And then our sponsorships are paying for things outside we do with the music education or, you know, purchasing the awards and so forth. Um, so heck yeah, we're here at rock mill studios, you know, rock mill industries, I should say, uh, in the practice room, they've been, um, uh, a supporter the entire time throughout the three years. Uh, they've made t-shirts for us. Uh, they did the swag bags last year. That's so cool. Uh, we're working with uh, Justin Hershey. He's a board member on the uh, Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame. And uh, he's going to be running the uh, audiovisual stuff this year, too. So, is he? Yeah, the whole team's going to be doing the whole ceremony, man. It's going to be awesome. Everybody here is <laughs> awesome. I mean, yeah. you know everybody here, don't you? I, I kind of know, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I don't, I don't know everybody, but I, I've met a fair number of them for sure. Yeah. No. yeah. Uh, it's pretty amazing what they do here. I mean, they yep. have, I mean, Recording studio, they do music lessons, rent this out, yep. screen printing. Right. Greg has his honey company. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's so cool. Wow. I, lo- I love that story too, man. It just, we, we came and did a, during the pandemic, we did an interview with them here uh, to just kind of showcase their business. Um, we did like a businesses of note kind of section. We did one with Rock Mill. So we had uh, Brandon Logan and, and Greg all talk about it. And it's, you know, all this music stuff, music stuff, music stuff. And honey, you know, it's like, <laughs> how does that fit in here? But it works, man. They yeah. Got, they got a cool setup here for sure. Yeah. I, I, I know right before we started recording, I was kind of giving you like the history on us. And like yeah. Logan literally used the term. He's like, that's another notch in the belt. Like right. another thing we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. Like it's our first podcast in here. So yep. yeah, let's do it. It was, yep. They got the <laughs> tattoo studio in here. You know? Yeah. yeah uh, laser ring upstairs. Now. Right. Yeah. Which, which I think that used to be, I think I remember coming in here. It used to be like almost like an apartment kind it was. of thing, right? Like yeah. people coming in here, record and be like, Oh, you can sleep up there. If you want. See, <laughs> the funny thing was, is whoever, whenever we first started recording here, whoever was living up in that apartment also was recording music in their apartment, which <laughs> I just thought was kind of funny. I'm like, wait, you rent your apartment from a recording studio, but you're also, recording music yeah, in your weird. apartment but uh, there was like one night we're sitting down here like waiting for the file to compress or something we just like <laughs> hear this girl singing the same thing over and over and oh, we're man. all just like dead silent sitting here we're like what the heck is that <laughs> right. and we're like oh they're tracking vocals okay <laughs> right <laughs> crazy stuff man yeah. oh man it's have you seen uh hershey's new studio all set up and everything i haven't i mean oh, uh so sweet. I, maybe i have i don't know i mean in there he had the hat embroidery area and just like a lot of equipment back there or has he moved out of that he's in the same spot okay but he re uh like completely renovated okay then i haven't seen that yet gotcha it looks pretty awesome now they do great screen printing work too yeah man Uh, yeah i was gonna say we can hit him up you can check it out after yeah man absolutely yeah it's true have you back on with logan here yeah man (laughs) we've done a couple episodes with logan he's always logan's such an interesting guy to talk to he has been so um Back to the nominations, though. So are you yep. doing only bands? Or are you doing also, are you doing recording studios too or right. producers or anything like that? Yeah, and that's a great question. So last year with COVID, uh, we wanted to move to the Hershey Theater last year, but the Hershey Theater said we're closed down. 
So we wanted to make it bigger and better, weren't able to make it happen. So what we ended up doing is we added a lot of categories and we, we created like a separate award show, which was all like the small businesses. So we did recording studio, live venues, uh, music lessons, you know, all kinds of uh, things outside of the box that, that aren't exactly musicians, but they're like entities in the local music music uh, scene. So like Instrument Shop was one as well. Um, we did a separate award ceremony for that, and now we're bringing all that back into the fold, right? So all the awards are at the big show this year because we don't have the code restrictions that we had last year, at least right now. Yep, um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yep. But, yeah, I mean, any – recognition that we can give that's someone that plays a part in the area we're all about so even on top of that stuff we created a um, lifetime achievement award last year so that's kind of a big new thing uh we had whitey knoll who who passed i think heck a month before the ceremony i think it was really close um he was kind of the, the founder and the, the guy who did pa musician magazine okay so we created the lifetime achievement award for him posthumously uh and now he's kind of carry that moniker forward so it's gonna be known as the whitey knoll award that's cool. um but yeah lifetime achievement award uh so we'll be announcing soon this year who's going to be getting that we have candidates for that uh we also do something called spot the spot awards right so i mean this stuff just never ends right we're going to be here all day talking about <laughs> stuff but uh the spot awards we created um we started last year were basically for kind of either musical acts or entities, however you want to define it, who deserve some recognition, but there probably wasn't enough players to make a full category out of it of nominees, right? So an example would be like we did uh, Best Christian Music Artist, right? We only knew of, I think, three artists in the area, and we weren't going to create a category and have it be like a whole hoopla of, like, you know, vote and all this kind of stuff. Um, one entity... Uh, stood out released an album that year so we just created a spot award to say hey best christian music artist goes to in that case it was vicky rogers um we did uh best um music publication we did tv music tv which was pennsylvania pipeline tv so you know we kind of expanded outside of the normal categories to say who did a great job this year went out of their way and deserved some recognition uh even though it wasn't included in the main ceremony or you know get the the actual official award we wanted to grant some acknowledgement and we're going to do that here again this year i think we probably have heck five or ten extra categories of people just you're getting an award this year um spot award you know that's awesome cool i stuff, like that man. yeah that's really cool <laughs> um man so i guess we're kind of running a little bit low on time here but yeah. uh one more question or unless unless you have anything else sure, sure. Up after that but uh What's what should you expect out of the experience? Walking in, walking out. What is somebody like me never went the last yep. two years walking in? What should I expect from the time I get there to the time I leave? I mean, the the, the hope and the intent is you you walk in, you know, to a a, a theater, a historic theater uh, that is you know glitz and glam on the ceilings from the floors, and you're instantly just sensing the electric atmosphere. You know, you're looking around, you're seeing people that you recognize. You know, you, you think of them almost as like local celebrities in this case. Like, I know that band, man. They did an awesome album this year. Yep. You know, you see everybody dressed to the nines. You grab a drink at the bar. You know, you feel like a rock star, whether you are or you aren't. You know, you could be a folk artist, but you want to feel like a rock star this night. Yep. Um, you know, you're getting interviewed on the red carpet. You know, there's podcasts, there's radio stations there. It's two hours of this red carpet experience, which in itself is a show. And then you move into the theater and we, we recognize the best of the best from the year, you know? Uh, and ultimately then it's an after party, man. It's, it's one awesome night, uh, that, you know, has been deemed the biggest night in our local music scene. And we try to live up to the, to the name, man. That's <laughs> phenomenal. And, oh God, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, how long, how long are the awards? Yeah. We try to make it just about a two hour, uh, award show. I and mean, people sit <laughs> too long. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> like, you know. You're thinking about watching a movie at home. You look at the running time, and you're like, this is two hours and 20 minutes. You're like, I can't do it. You're like, it's an hour and 40 minutes. All right, let's do it. Yep. You know? yep. So we try to we try to keep it around that two-hour mark as well. Um, you know, in, in years past, we've had uh, some people come up and speak way longer than they were allotted, <laughs> or musicians play way longer than allotted. So it, it certainly may have the tendency to run over, but uh, hopefully the way the program works, too, with – with giving away some awards, having a, a performance, uh, inducting somebody and having an acceptance speech for that, you know, it kind of flips through this, um, this, uh, 
pattern, I guess, is the best way to put it of, of giving away awards, having a performance. It, it constantly keeps everybody's attention and, uh, you know, the night flows along pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's crazy. And I'm sure if it's uh, anything as engaging as you are, it's going to be pretty good, man. <laughs> I don't know we about usually that, take a half, like halfway point break. I just realized we're, we're like, wow, we didn't even uh, take a break or anything. Yeah, man. Wow, that's crazy. Well, uh, did you guys have any questions for him or anything like that before we wrap this up? Or no, you have just, anything else you want to talk about? I was going to say, just shout out whatever you want to bring up i mean we'll toss everything else in the description sure man yeah i mean you know just remember the uh the acronym cpmhof all the social medias are at cpmhof uh tickets will are on sale still for the ceremony so come on out whether you're just a fan you know or or you're a relative of somebody who's nominated uh come out and enjoy the full experience even the red carpet experience it's not just you know you don't have to like show that you're an artist to get in it's open invitation uh to anybody who appreciates the local music scene and uh the only thing i can think of is is we have something called the vault. So I mentioned, you know, the, the intent here in the future to actually have like a physical hall of fame location. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're accepting donations of like memorabilia all the time. Right. So autograph stuff from, uh, bands of prior current brands, you know, we, we have, uh, we have some instruments, we have some stage jackets that some of the bands have worn over previous years, autograph CDs, pictures, you name it. There's probably stuff here you could just walk out with. Oh, definitely. (laughs) Definitely. This place is a museum in its own right. It really is. I mean, look at the hallway there. They have all their, old and early yeah, ending stuff back there. Absolutely, man. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they got all the, the scrapbook basically of early ending out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, we're always um, we're always accepting that kind of stuff too. So if you feel like you have anything that you want to be, you know, enshrined or immortalized in our local music hall of fame, we're, uh, we also accept those items to be donated uh, to be you know, seen by all basically. That's phenomenal. Yeah, um, one thing I completely forgot to bring up though, I can't believe we didn't talk about voting. Right. Yeah. 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 How do you, yeah. Uh, what, what, what do people do to vote? Yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, uh, and how long you know, the question you for. Yeah. So voting is open right now. Um, it's it started as you know we open the nomination process we get everything in consider that results in the nominees themselves okay and w- as soon as the nominees come out we open up fan voting right so fan voting is open right now on our website you can go vote for your favorites you can vote for one act you can vote for the whole gamut um, and that is open through the end of the month so January thirty first is fan voting uh, full transparency we did not want the award ceremony to be labeled as a popularity contest so fan voting is not the only piece right it is is part of the equation, but is not the be all end all. So we're aware out there, you know, some people might be in college and they can get their whole college to vote or, you know, they're working at a place full time and they can get the entire business to, to vote for them. And just because they receive 10,000 votes compared to somebody else who gets a hundred doesn't necessarily make them the best act of the year. So Agreed. we wanted to make sure that it's not a popularity contest. So the fan voting is a piece. It's a part. Um, but ultimately each of the board members and each of the advisory committee uh, members also get a vote to therefore determine who the winners are. And, uh, you know, that happens here pretty soon, actually. So we have to customize those awards and get them made. So we'll know long before the ceremony who wins, but it'll be, uh, you know, kept under tight wraps until, until it's announced. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess basically if you want to shout out your sponsors or anything like that and, We'll wrap this up. Sure, man. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of sponsors that they th- say thank you for. We're actually in a couple negotiations with a couple sponsors, but uh, definitely want to point out again our platinum sponsor, the Englewood, a fine, fine uh, live music venue. Also make great beer, great food. Check them out uh, online on their social media. And if you haven't been there to see a show, um, heck, recently I went to see uh, an artist that I had never heard of before just to take in. Uh, local music experience at the Englewood, and it's top notch, man. So, make sure to set aside time to at least visit there, either have a meal, try a beer, or um, or see an artist because it's a it's a great venue. And we're we're super thankful for their continued sponsorship, and we're eternally grateful that we're able to give back to them this year and have the after party there. So, look forward to seeing everybody at the award show, at the red carpet experience, as well as at the after party. So, thanks so much for having me, Danny. Of course. Thanks for coming on, dude. I had a great time. Absolutely. Likewise. (laughs) All right.